and they are as follows. Samantha Altadort. Alan Bethea, Jr. <laughs> Taylor Brown. Dakota Elliott. Camille Haskins. Michaela Hearn. Our songbird, Madison Hilliard. <laughs> Jaden Knight. Brooke Major. Micaiah McCrary. George Pickens the fourth. And Ryla Trailer. them a hand. Let's give them a collective hand. Of Is Miss Michelle Thompson here? Please, please come up, Miss Thompson. Dr. Thompson. <laughs> we will now ask the white coat presenters to assist our scholars with the coding ceremony. Okay, so now the scholars will uh, repeat the uh, Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Scholars O. So you guys will repeat after me. We, the members of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Scholars Inaugural Class. We, the members of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Scholars Inaugural Class. Pledge to strive for excellence in our preparation for entrance into the medical dental profession. Let's just strive for excellence in our preparation for entrance into the medical dental profession. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we pledge to be lifelong learners. We pledge to be lifelong learners. And to remain current with the changing trends in the profession. And to remain current with the changing trends in the profession. 
diligently preparing our minds and bodies, diligently preparing our minds and bodies to provide care for the underserved. To provide care for the underserved. We pledge to serve as a symbol. We pledge to serve as a symbol of justice and equity in the healthcare community. Of justice and equity in the healthcare community. By removing the barriers and health disparities. By removing the barriers and health disparities that affect the underserved and minority communities. That affect the underserved and minority communities. Most importantly, most importantly, we pledge to honor the legacy of Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. We pledge to honor the legacy of Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. and his mission of providing health care and his mission of providing health care with integrity, empathy, and compassion for all. With integrity, empathy, and compassion for all. Thank you. You guys made it to the stage. It is now my honor to present the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute Healthcare Scholars. Would you please stand? <laughs> Mr. Sean Cheney. <laughs> Ms. Kayla Davis. Mr. Xavier Irves, Ms. Zaria Foster, Mr. Jamari Jemison, Mr. John Kim, Mr. Ashton Terrell, and Mr. Daniel Wilkinson. the presenters to place the coats onto the scholars.
Okay, scholars, you repeat after me. We, the members of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Scholars Inaugural Class, pledge to strive for excellence and our preparation for entrance into the medical dental profession. We pledge to be lifelong learners and to remain current with the changing trends in the profession. And to remain current with the changing trends in the profession. Diligently preparing our minds and bodies. Diligently preparing our minds and bodies. To provide care for the underserved. To provide care for the underserved. We pledge to serve as a symbol. We pledge to serve as a symbol. Of justice and equity. Of justice and equity. In the health care community. In the health care community. By removing bar barriers and health disparities. That affect, the underserved and minority communities. that affect the underserved and minority communities. Most importantly, Most importantly we pledge to honor the legacy of Dr. Levi Watkins, Jr. and his mission of providing health care with integrity, empathy, and compassion for all. Thank you. We'll now have a recognition of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Society members by Ms. Lolita Hodge. Thank you, Dr. McMurray. Let's give our scholars another round of applause. They are part of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute. And there's another section of the Institute called the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Society. And if any other society members are still here, we're going to ask you all to stand at this time so that they, you can be recognized also. <laughs> the society member consists of sophomores through seniors that aspire also to be physicians. And they are not in the Levi Watkins Accelerated Program, but most of them are majoring in biology or chemistry and are aspiring to go to medical school also. They do get to participate in a lot of the events that we have. And we are also, um, they've been around for 
uh, about five or six years. And so they are actually the ones that have been functioning under the D Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute until this year. Now, it's, we're getting ready to come to a close. Um, we have a couple of things to do, so just bear with us. When we started this journey of creating the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute, it was brought to the mind of, we call our visionary, which is Ms. Barbara Merrill. She is definitely one who follows the scripture of Habakkuk 2 and 2 to write the vision, make it plain on tablets, and run with it, and give it to those that are run with it. Not only did she hand it off to us to run with it, she ran with us. So we're gonna ask Ms. Merrill to come to the stage at this time. She is a person that has worked to make sure that this is done um, by the approval of Dr. Glover, who is also one of the top supporters. The, they got together and decided they wanted the program, and so this is the program that was created uh, to follow one of our great alumni, Dr. Levi Watkins. Ms. Merrill. Good afternoon, standing ovation. <laughs> Never had one of those. So Dr. Glover, in your words, this is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> so let's rejoice and be glad in it. I am so excited uh, because this is a dream come true. Today we celebrate the first inaugural class of the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Institute. It is a dream fulfilled. It is remnants of the 1993 television public broadcasting series documentary entitled Dream Fulfilled, which documented the life and works of Dr. Levi Watkins. After 1993, he continued to do great works, pursue his dreams, fulfill his dreams until his death in 2015. So we here today know that it is a beginning and many more dreams will originate here and be fulfilled. Every dream, or every great dream, begins with a dreamer. I am grateful to the first dreamer, Dr. Annie Garraway, sister of Dr. Levi Watkins who envisioned a program at this university that he loved, Tennessee State University. That program would be a fitting memorial to his life and works. She asked that I recommend such a program, and it is now the Dr. Levi Watkins Institute. Her vision and support are monumental. Secondly, on today, when God gives your vision, he will also give you what you needed to accomplish it. And I want that to be heard by our scholars today. And I repeat, when God gives you a vision, he will give you what is needed to accomplish the vision. We are grateful to Dr. Glover for capturing, capturing the dream and putting it in motion. I am honored to have been given the opportunity to lead the initiative. We recognize today all the groups who actually made it happen. We recognize the Dr. Levi Watkins Jr. Select Committee of 23 people who assumed the responsibility to plan and implement this program. We recognize Meharry Medical College, our partners, who work with us weekly to revitalize a collaboration between the two schools that existed as far back as 1950. So this program was crafted, reminiscent of that program in the 50s. We recognize our volunteers, our consultants, and colleagues 
who brought their individual expertise and joined us in making this dream a reality. You know, so many dreams and visions seem impossible. Then they seem improbable. And then when we summon the will, the commitment, and the fortitude, they seem inevitable. So today, this is our present and our future, and we celebrate. The program was developed, publicized, reaching out to the highest caliber students entering college this year. Students were recruited, interviewed, selected, and are here today with individual dreams and goals. So we congratulate and we're excited that you're beginning your journey to medical school with us. So I want the audience to give you another round of applause. <laughs> Dr. McMurray, if you will allow me, we have a couple of people, three I'd like to introduce, who are members of this year's honoree, homecoming honorees and grand marshals. First of all, I'd like to introduce Dr. Edith Mitchell, who is chair of the Dr. Levi Watkins Advisory Committee. She provides the leadership for this organization to continue to exist, to flourish, and to bring all of the necessary time. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. And for those of you who are smiling beyond the mask, you saw her on a video a few days ago. She invited you to participate in the event. I saw that you did participate with her at Jefferson Medical School in Philadelphia. You sent me your pictures, and I want to congratulate you because it's important that you take advantage of every opportunity that's offered. And thank you, Dr. Mitchell, for that opportunity. Let's give her a round of applause. Now we have two other people we'd like to recognize today. One we've already heard from, obviously, Dr. Alvin Crawford. And what a wonderful journey he's been on since he left Tennessee State University. And I'm happy to call Dr. Crawford my classmate. We sat in physics together, in biology and anatomy and all of those courses, and I'm extremely proud of him. In addition to that, we have Dr. Dorothy Granberry. Right. <laughs> Dr. Granberry is also an honoree, and she has requested, since she knew Dr. Watkins, that she would have the opportunity to make a couple of statements. And Dr. Ma, would you come forward? I'd also like to say while she's coming forward that Dr. Watkins and Dr. Granberry were my students and at Tennessee State University in 1966, beginning in 65, when I became Director of Student Activities. And later, Dr. Granberry, in 66, became Miss Brains, and Dr. Watkins was Mr. Brains. So you see Mr. and Mrs. Brains personified here today. <laughs> and that's what you have to work toward in being the future. Come right, thank forward. you, Barbara. Sure. Oh, <laughs> I am really glad to be here today, and I was asked to talk about Dr. Levi Watkins as a young person, a young person, and that's really cru crucial. You're aware of what he did as a professional, but I think you need to be aware of the foundation and what he worked from. So my little few remarks is called Levi Watkins, A Man with a Mission. Fifty-nine years ago, Levi and I, along with several hundred other students, were freshmen here at TSU. We came during a time of social upheaval, the 1950s, 1960s period, the phase of the struggle of African Americans to make the US, United States of America and the world more hostile places for all people. Keep that in mind. 
that that struggle wasn't just in terms of African Americans, but we were struggling to make the world hostile for all people. We met, meaning Levi and I met doing freshman orientation. Some of you remember, that was that week of getting to know the campus and its students. During that week, all of us who had come with a purpose made themselves known. And among them was Levi Watkins, and I can name some others as I will go on. I'm, and I'm going to, it's not going to be long. Levi and I had, Levi was a biology major, and I was a psychology major. So we had some classes together. We had intro to biology and a math course with one of the Gassaway sisters. We were also both members of honor societies like Alpha Kappa Mu and Beta Kappa Chi. In spring 1965, Levi ran for student government, for student government president, along with Donald Lowry from Savannah, Tennessee, John Newby from, I think, Louisville, Kentucky, and maybe Vory Moon from Florida. I'm not sure about Vory, okay? I ran for student government vice president on the ticket with Donald Lowry. My opponents were Leon Carter from Ohio, Joyce Gates from Memphis, Tennessee, and probably someone from Omega Psi Phi. And there was, well, I don't think there was anybody on the Kappa ticket. Norma Pryor, Yolanda High, and possibly Melissa Easley, I couldn't remember if it was Melissa Easley or Yvonne Owens, ran for Miss TSU. After the election outcome, Levi was president, I was elected vice president, and Norma Pryor was Miss TSU. Now this is the year 1965-66, and Miss Barbara Merrill came back, a former Miss TSU, to work in student government. Okay, so this was our first year running student government, and it was our first year trying to run, be the face of TSU. Mm -hmm. During the 1965-66 year, the three of us, Levi Watkins, myself, and Norma Pryor, we were the face of the face, face, F-A-C-E, of TSU. During the four years I spent with Levi as a student, and the year we, we led the TSU student body, I found Levi to be, in the words of Washington, the Washington Post columnist Robin Given, to be a person who knew the following three things. One, that forward programs is a communal effort. Two, that forward progress is built on the good works of those who came before us. We sometimes think we're starting it, but it is, there has always been something going on. And thirdly, that the way to repay our predecessors for their labor is to offer up opportunity to the next generation. And I think Levi, I followed him through the years, and he tried to live toward those things. That was what opening the gates for more African American uh, students to get into medical school was all about. And I think if you know, you think about him as a young person, uh, then it's much for you to live up to it. And I got to tell you one last thing. They recognize, you recognize Dr. Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell and I both come from a little town in West Tennessee called Stanton, Tennessee. Did you hear that? I lived next door to her grandparents all my life. And her grandparents lived next door to her. And it's a little that big, okay? And, and all our families, we were just ordinary people but it shows you what ordinary people can do. And Levi was about that also. Let's give another round of applause for Dr. Granberry. Dr. Granberry is a homecoming honoree. We're so grateful that she's here, so happy to see her, and all of the wonderful things that she has accomplished during her life. I had the opportunity to come back after several years and work in the psychology department with Dr. Granberry. I can tell you, she was not just Miss Brains. She was Miss Brains all through her life. And congratulations for your honor, Dr. So let's give her another round of applause. On today, I'd like to acknowledge 
uh, people who have contributed so much to the success of this program so far and who have made it possible for, two, for us to have a white coat ceremony today to start these young people on their journey to medical school. So first of all, I'd like to have you stand when I call your category and your names. For the family members of these scholars, would you please stand so we can give you a round of applause. All the family members. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They've come from Texas, Alabama, Georgia, all over, so we're so happy to have you here to witness. I also want to let you know that this program is being streamed and it's being seen across the United States. So all the parents who are not here today are having the opportunity to see their children in this process by uh, virtual. All right, I'd like for the um, Dr. Levi Watkins Advisory Board, Chair Dr. Mitchell, if you'd be kind enough to stand one more time so we can acknowledge you and give you a round of applause. I must tell you, when Levi was a senior, Dr. Mitchell was a freshman. And I was working with both of them, and Levi said one day, she's going places. You watch her, she's gonna be successful. And she is a Brigadier General in the Air Force now. In addition to being a physician, she was also two years ago the National President of the National <laughs> Medical Association. That's all the African American physicians. <laughs> and scholars, she too is a graduate of Tennessee State University. So you have a legacy to fulfill here. Uh, the Dr. Levi Watkins Select Committee, would you please stand? Uh, persons who've been at the table every other week working on this happen, please stand up. Let us see you. Get your round of applause for all your work. We've got two up here. Thank you very much. Uh, my Harry partners, would you stand? Dr. Sheree Farmer Dixon, Dr. Michelle. Thank you so much for your cooperation over these several months and for helping us to go back and find this program that was in the books when Dr. Crawford and I were freshmen in 1956. I was a freshman, I think he came the next year because he came out in three years. However, in 1956, this was a program that got me to Nashville. I wanted to come to Nashville because I read so much about TSU. And I wasn't necessarily interested in being a doctor, but I did say I wanted to be a lab technician so I could get my godfather to let my parents come away from, let me come away from home and come to Nashville. <laughs> so uh, at that time, people were saying Nashville uh, was a fast school. I'm from a little town about this big, Greenwood, Mississippi, never you have ever heard of it. So this was a big place. So my parents were a little concerned about me making that journey. So I'm here. And I have got here and never really wanted to leave. So uh, this is my 60-some years. So I'm excited to still be present at Tennessee State University. <laughs> Watching us today are Dr. Andre Churchwell from Vanderbilt University, a friend, and we hope soon to be a partner with Vanderbilt University and this program. We have Tennessee State University alumni supporters, specifically those in the medical field who decided very early when we requested that they would assist us in this program. Dr. Kelly Turner and Dr. Daniel King, would you raise? Stand, please. <laughs> now, the program I'm speaking of, these are the graduates of the TSU Meharry program that existed before today. So we went back, we vitalized the program, brought it back in line, and here you now are part of that program. Would not have happened really without Dr. Farmer Dixon. I'm grateful. Uh, Tennessee State University administrators, faculty, staff, and alumni, would you please stand? We want the parents to see who you are. These are Tennessee State University administrators, faculty, staff, alumni. And I want the scholars to stand just one more time. Because we must be proud of you. 
And we want to be sure to get some pictures of you from up here. So when it's over, please don't run, because we got to get a picture again. Thank you. You may be seated. While I'm here, I'd like to suggest that uh, we have and are in the process of getting many friends to support us. Uh, you can text us and support us by mentioning to give to Drive Watkins. 41444, for all of you who are out there listening to us, us by virtual means, know that you can text Dr. Levi Watkins to 41444. Also, I'd like to say that in addition to the persons that I have named and also the people who are supporting us, I have a few other folks that I would like to certainly give recognition to. Some of them are not here now, but I want you to know that they are supporting you completely. Uh, Mr. Winrow, who is homecoming chair, uh, would you stand so we can give you a round of applause? Thank you. We'd like to recognize today a foundation that is working to support the student through this program. For all of those who are listening, we would welcome your support of a student through the program. This foundation is called the March Foundation. We also acknowledge our corporate friends, Microsoft and Baxter International. We also request the support of other friends in the corporate world. We reach out today to others who share the mission of inclusion, equity, and opportunity in healthcare. We welcome your support, and we plan to change the face of healthcare in America. Thank you. Would uh, Mr. Kim and Ms. Altador come to the front here? First cohort of Levi Watkins scholars would like to present you these roses as a token of our gratitude. Thank you so much. It isn't by chance that the 20 of us are here today. We're all from, we're here from different cities and different backgrounds, but we're united by our passion for medicine and for serving others. And we know that God brought us here today, and it's because of you and you being the driving force behind this program. So on behalf of the cohort, I want you to know that you are a part of us, and here is your own loud cohort. Thanks to all of you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. 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 so much. This is a surprise. I'm going to let you take this. Yes, ma'am. Let me give it to Ms. Hyde. Wow, there are certain moments in life that are worth remembering forever. And this certainly will be one of them. And I am most grateful to all of you for all of the times we called and fought against other universities to get you here, talk with parents. All of this makes it worthwhile because you're here. We see your bright future, and we want to be a part of it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Ms. Merrill. We'd like to thank all of you for coming out and spending the evening with us, and that concludes our program for the day. Thank you. <laughs>